I am not an expert in anything. I'm, I take in information more like a dog might in, in a museum of, of smells. Uh, I, I sniff around here and there and take, take in little bits of information um, uh, before I get distracted by something else. That's, that's great when it comes to synthesizing a lot of disparate branches of study, but not very good when it, when it comes to um, focusing in on the veracity of a particular piece of nonfiction. As such, you should take it with a large grain of salt when I tell you that Wellington uh, feels to me, and I have to, I have to stress that word feels, uh, like a cartoon version of some sort of event. The game is designed for four players, but can be played with fewer, um, but it's designed for four players to be played with as partners, uh, each, each par pair of partners sitting across from each other on the table, or you could sit in a different way, but that's how it's designed. Um, although the partners play as teams, there can only be one winner of the four combatants in this game. Um, each of the four different sides you can play as in the game have their own feel, um, which makes them feel more, more like uh, characters than like, uh, like nations or armies. Uh, so there's, the, there's the, the Wellington side, which is the British side, um, and they, they have Wellington, who's this strong hammer. He's the, the mighty one to watch out for, uh, but very, very few forces, comparatively speaking. Um, but they also have uh, water capability, so they can go sail around and, you know, move their hammer around, but they kind of have to be focused like this, uh, maybe a, a sword or something moving around, um, a watery sword, like maybe, maybe a, a trident, like a Poseidon trident. Um, and they're partnered with the Spanish, who are the weakest of the sides, but they're the most numerous, and they can pop up anywhere since the conflict is in Spain. That's the peninsula in the Peninsular War that this is talking about. It's a smaller subset of the Napoleonic Wars. Um, and then there's the two French brothers, who are the other side. Uh, one's the kind of big, burly French brother, and the other one's the kind of small, crafty French brother, and they have a lot of different abilities depending on what cards they get. Where you see, the game is played with cards um, like these, uh, and if you look at the backs of these cards, you'll notice that they're different. I have two different types of cards. These are these are taken from the general stock that everyone's going to get, and these are special home cards. Each side has their own home cards, which uh, consists of their special powers. Now there are some special powers outside of these home cards, such as the British's um, ability to use boats and the French they start out with a higher bonus uh, in, in fighting, but these cards will really define how the, the sides play um, because there aren't that many of them. One of the things I enjoy about the game is that since it's part of a, the, this conflict is part of a larger war, uh, it allows for the outside world to just impact the game uh, with no control of the player, really. Uh, so the game it has the potential to be played in three years' turns, uh, uh, hands of cards, but it can end early. It can end after one turn, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's a die roll, uh, bec uh, which signifies that the, the, the larger war ended for some reason, or forces got pulled out of the peninsula or whatever. This can make a huge difference in terms of uh, whether or not you win the game. So it's, it's not necessarily a game you want to play if you're a super competitive person, I wouldn't think. Uh, for, you know, so like the first year, the French have a huge advantage. Well, not a huge advantage, but they have a big advantage in winning. They're, they're stronger. Events come into play that weaken the French as, as the game goes on. Then if you're in a, in a longer war, it's more likely that either the, the British or the Spanish win. Their, their team will win because, you know, the French get weaker. I enjoy that aspect. Um, you know, these games we play, they're contained. They're, they're contained in their space. But when they can draw upon and make themselves feel like part of a larger whole, even within their containment, you know, you get the, you get the benefit of being able to focus, but still feel like, you know, it's, it belongs to something. The, the patch of skin you're looking at is part of a larger body. So play takes place over a series of hands of cards, as I said. Uh, cards have a number, and then they have some text. You can either do the number or the text. There's a lot of games that do that. Uh, the number lets you gives you a certain amount of points, action points, basically, that you can use. And the text will do a lot of different things. Um, and this is... Uh, texts in these games, kind of uh, games that use cards, but 
uh, deal with the subject matter, let you know, I think kind of clue you into how much of a simulation they are. Like, whether or not, if you play this game, are you going to feel like the General Wellington or not? Um, and uh, when I see a card that lets me choose between causing a storm to happen or, you know, moving troops, that makes me think that maybe it's not directly supposed to feel like being a general because a storm, you know, a general isn't going to be able to choose to cause a storm uh, on its enemy unless it's it's a magician general and I don't think Wellington um, or Suchet or Sult or um, Joseph or, or Cast I forget the Spanish guy's names, um, are supposed to be wizards. When it is your turn, you're going to have a chance to play one, usually two cards if you want. But it's not always good to play two cards because then you might not, you might run out of cards. And then um, those French brothers, they're going to have more cards and they're going to just get to keep doing things after you played all your cards. Or if you're the French brothers, you might have played all your cards and then maybe the Spaniards get to keep um, having their mobs pop up on you. The game feels loose and dramatic to me. There are a lot of um, big swings in the action. There are a, a lot of dice rolling. A lot of ways that things can just change. It doesn't mean it, it doesn't. It, it but it still feels like you're involved. Overall, Wellington feels to me like a fun game. I, I really like to play it with that full complement of four players. It's a it's a nice game to play with friends and laugh and. Um, it's it's like there there are, there's a genre of games which has people on the map um, and lots of fighting and it's kind of like that except it feels like it it's connected to something I don't know if that connection is strong or specific but it definitely feels like it's it's part of something and things happen for something of a reason um, and that that connection one of the reasons I seek games with that connection, partially because I think it's important for things to be about things, um, or to, you know, not just be just for fun. I, I don't think anything should be just for fun, because it really isn't. You know, it's that's like candy. Um, candy's not just for fun, it's for fun and for rotting your teeth or whatever, or giving you diabetes. Um, but that connection to something makes it makes the interactions more interesting. It makes this map is more interesting because it's connected to real places. Um, the things these people can do are more interesting because they are connected to real things and not just because those things are real but because reality has a better imagination, a more interesting intricate imagination than uh, any human I've met. It's fun. Wellington.